Thank you, Thank you. Now, from populist demagogues to liberal elites, Fox News to the BBC, the warring tribes of our troubled world agree on few ideals and still fewer facts, yet they all share the belief that they are right. Are we all suffering from the illusion that we can uncover the truth? Should we embrace the world of competing facts while still seeking a progressive and stable society? Or do we need grand new narratives to help us escape a dangerous relativistic world? We've got three people here on the platform to help us. On my right is Hilary Lawson, who's a non-realistic philosopher, um, better known for his theory of closure. Uh, he's the founder of the IAI and How the Light Gets In. Paul Mason, who's the former economics editor for both Channel 4 News and the BBC's Newsnight. Uh, Paul is the author of Post-Capitalism, A Guide to Our Future. And Ellen McPherson is co-director of the Centre of Government and Human Rights. She's uh, Cambridge University lecturer in sociology of new media and digital technology. So, are we all suffering from the illusion that we can uncover the truth? Hilary Lawson. Thank you, Roger. Well, I guess my, my brief answer is yes. I think we are at risk of uh, suffering from the illusion that we might uncover the truth. Uh, and I guess the real question I, I think is, well, why are we so attracted by this illusion? Um, I mean, truth is such a beguiling uh, word. It seems to offer so much uh, as if we might be able to arrive at fully understanding how things are. And it enables us to end conversations, you know, well, that's just true. And it enables us to justify actions. We can say both, both, both the terrible actions and the good ones. Um, so on a personal level, truth is beguiling, but it's also been beguiling at a social level. Truth was uh, central to the enlightenment, to the idea of gradually uncovering knowledge and discovering how it is, to, to the idea of social progress, that we were going somewhere, that we might arrive somewhere. So truth has indeed been uh, a particularly beguiling idea. But I'm going to argue that it is an illusion. Uh, it's a fantasy. And um, it may be a powerful fantasy. Uh, it may be, in a sense, a valuable fantasy. But it's a fantasy nevertheless. And I think that I'm going to argue that that's because our language and our theories and our stories about the world are not descriptions. We imagine them as being descriptions of stuff out there. And I don't think that's what's going on. Our language and our accounts of the world, our, our narratives, are tools to enable us to do things. They function by taking what I would call the openness of the world and holding it in specific ways. And we hold a world in a particular way. And as a result of that, we're able to do different things with it. So if I say, you know, this glass, um, you can say, well, what sort of glass is it? Is it, uh, is it fragile? Is it whatever it would it be? But I might say it's not a glass. It's um, actually a collection of silicon atoms, in which case I'd have a rather different series of questions that would follow from that account. You know, What's the array of the silicon atoms? What's the, uh, what's, how, do, how do they function? Or I might say about it, it's an example in a talk, in which case the question is, well, did it, was it, did it work as an example? Was it effective? Was it not effective? So the way that we close the world changes how we intervene with it. And our choices are not between the correct description, which is impossible because language is a tool, and you wouldn't say, do you have the true computer? You might have a better or worse one. Or do you have a true lawnmower? No, you have a better lawnmower or a worse lawnmower, but you don't have the correct one. And I think the same thing is, is the case with our language. And I think we can, despite that they're only tools, we can refine those tools. If we have one that doesn't quite work, then we can see how it operates and change how it works to try and get it to work better. Are we all suffering yeah. from the illusion that we can uncover the truth? Paul. If you want to categorize me, I am a Marxist, okay? Now what we uh, think is that we solve the problem, or we try to solve the problems that you've outlined there uh, in the following way. 
the assumption is that the reality our brains are recording is real and, and that our brains are a part of that reality. That is, we, I am a monist. I believe there is, there is no soul or intelligence separate than matter. And in the process of recording this matter in my brain, there are two sort of added bits that, are, that historical materialism brings to the question of how we know things, epistemology. One is that it says the process of knowing is active. It's interactive with the world and not, as in Immanuel Kant, a sort of passive sort of a photography paper trying to record what's going on. The way I know that, that the physics of an aeroplane are, are right is that I can write them down and together with someone on the other side of the world, we can both try and fly the aeroplane according to its rules and it will generally, generally fly. So it is not passive cognition, there is an active cognition. The second part is it is a social cognition. I just described on purpose, it wasn't me predicting what, how the aeroplane would, would work, it's me and a lot of other people. Now you are quite right that uh, we, we evolved language as a way of representing the world in, as our brains perceive it. And you are also quite right that our modes of perception depend on levels of abstraction. Therefore, the glass is a glass at the level of abstraction of physical reality, of, 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 of molecular, it's, it's sand and whatever else it is. At, some, at, at a quantum physical level, it, you can't even touch it without changing it. But, okay, Paul, but the all question these was, things, the question all was, things Paul, are... Are we all suffering from the illusion that we can uncover the truth? Therefore, it is not an illusion that one can have accurate knowledge, but that the knowledge itself... To, first, f first thing, the reality itself is in flux. Reality itself is, is, is always changeable. So the attempt to capture it in a series of syllogisms a equals A, that is a glass and so is that. Well, no, they're different things. They're actually decaying at different rates. Because reality changes, first of all. The second thing is, for, for me, for Marxist, the truth is also contradictory. That is, if I say, if somebody asks me, what is neoliberalism? What is the system we live in? I will say, it's a thing that's falling apart. For me, truth is a quality of human thought, not a quality of reality. That is, um, it, I can say, I will never say there is an absolute truth. So, as, I mean, my job as a journalist is to, is to, first of all, try to record facts as I see them. I think that can be done. That doesn't mean I've, I've achieved truth, but it, it does, I do think that one can make ac accurate and testable statements about reality that we have codified over 400 and odd years into the scientific method. Uh, it, Difficult and problematic though the scientific method is, the reason it is under attack now, which is what I think we all want to talk about soon when we've all done this, is because of, of a project of irrationalism in which a certain section of humanity actually wants to try well, and deny the possibility of accurate perception. All right, let me put one, other, one last question here for you. So, are you saying there are facts? No, I'm, but there are certainly facts. They exist in books of facts. But, but facts no. are... are, are fa it, weirdly, as a materialist, I will agree with you that language is simply a, a, an attempt to frame things. Of, the word fact is one of them. Well, no, hold on, hold on. Is reality no, exists? Hold on. Reality exists. Yeah. So to the extent that reality is truth, truth exists. And, our, uh, our perception of the reality... Mm -hmm. It may be impossible for us to be for to perceive reality fully, but I underneath, but Please underneath do, yeah. that is a reality. Are, are you are you saying there is the a reality? reality is out there? It, it, our, our attempts at cognition are always inadequate because the, somebody will always do better. You know, the, the Copenhagen interpretation comes on top of Maxwell, comes on top of Newton. It always gets better, and, and therefore I do not expect us ever to achieve stasis with a. a the, we have now perceived phenomenon A as true as it's going to get, number one, but in the process of perceiving, phenomenon A has moved into A plus one. And so it's just, I'm, 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 I'm dwelling at the level of epistemology because it's not often you hear Marxists do this because they're all interested in the class struggle, but because I think that it, it, is, it was this mode of thought came, out, came precisely out of a critique of of both dualism, mind and matter, and attempts at materialism that could not explain change, and indeed could not explain falsification. Right. Uh, I'll come back in a moment to a number of those issues. Ella, uh, can I bring you back to that first question that, you, that we've asked you to address? 
which is are we all suffering from the illusion that we can uncover the truth? Great. Okay. Good question. Um, I agree with the illusion part, but my answer to the question is no along three dimensions. First, it's, it's with respect to this notion of we all. Are we all suffering from this? No. Some people are suffering from this, and these are the people who traditionally have been used to establishing the truth, right? The truth that we all agree with, that we all accept. Scientists, academics, politicians, journalists, that kind of thing, right? Which, if we think about it, for example... To continue watching this video, click the link in the top left or in the description below. Or visit iai.tv for more debates and talks from the world's leading thinkers on today's biggest ideas.